Hello, I'm Dilek Dutta, and I'm going to introduce you to this level of UFLP selection. You might be the one we are looking for to become a UFLP future leader. This next part of the experience will introduce you to our brands and how we are using innovation and technology to bring these brands to our customers. I'm looking forward to seeing your contributions on the projects and tasks we have lined up for you next. You're about to meet our functional leader who's going to ask for your help in solving the series of challenges they're facing. There will be three short challenges initially. Listen to the scenario and the follow-up questions. You'll have some time to think about how you would handle these before recording your response. You'll be able to see the scenario and questions on screen during your response time. So you can check back to see whether you're covering all the right areas. Now, once you've responded to the short scenarios, there will be a slightly longer business case study for you to complete. You'll have time to review the background information and then 10 minutes to prepare a response. You'll have up to 5 minutes to present your response back to me via video. This level should take around 25 minutes to complete. All the instructions you need to successfully complete this level will come to you on screen. You can make sure it's really clear what you need to do. Now a couple of checks you should do before you begin. Make sure you're somewhere quiet where you won't be interrupted in the next half hour. Run the system checks so we're able to see and hear you clearly. Make sure you're happy with how you're appearing on screen. Have some paper, a pen and a calculator available in case you want to make some notes or run some figures before you record your response. We give our best performances when you're feeling comfortable. Please try to relax and be yourself. Thanks for your input. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Okay, the first thing which I want to ask is that try practice question or continue with practicing uh, or continue without practicing. I think the main important thing is I don't want to practice, so I'm going to continue without practicing. service team and I will try to okay and I will try to convince them that uh, because we have to increase the solution this is it. how would you encourage how would you encourage the customer service of the team to reach an agreement okay uh, what do you believe is a customer service team priority what am I you talk on for support mm, start recording
okay so the first thing which i will do is so the first question is what would you say or do to resolve this agreement because i think disagreements are caused due to the lack of information or lack of communication so first thing which i will do is i will go and meet to the customer service department and to listen there what are their problem or why they don't want to uh, do the thing which i want to do so what is the main reason of conf conflict so if there is any reason so i will try to figure out and try to resolve it and the second question is how would you encourage the customer service team to reach an agreement so i think uh, the solution to every problem is the negotiation so first we have to go and ask uh, uh, first i will go and ask the customer service team that what is their problem or why they don't want to do because definitely if they are saying so there will be some point there there maybe there have some solid point so i will go ask and try to figure out the problem and if i if or if my plan is uh, you can say not problemming or making any problem for them so i will try to communicate or i will to tell him tell them that uh, this is the best solution because we have to uh, you can say restore our sources what do you believe is a customer service team in? so i think that their main priority is to facilitate the customer that because they are the ones of the who are directly dealing with the customers uh, they have to check that what is the demand in the what is the customer's demand and what is our product so they have to they are basically the bridge between customer demand and the product we are, we are supplying so if there is any problem with the uh, we are supplying, supplying side so definitely customer service team is is going to communicate with us and if they if the requirement of the customer is somehow different so they can communicate us and try to figure out I mean they are just making a relationship between customers and the suppliers what else uh, and last question is what else might you draw on for sport i think for sport uh, definitely we have the senior for like my manager so i will directly communicate to also communicate to my managers that this type of conflict is going to occur and what is your precious uh, suggestion that uh, what you want to say maybe there is some flaw on my side or maybe there is some flaw on the customer service side so definitely when you have someone who has the seniority and who has the more experience than you so we should consult uh, them for the solution so definitely i will go for the manager or the boss or my directly my boss so i think that's it main thing is that to, to resolve the conflict is uh, to communicate to communicate as well between the two parties done answer for second chance you are responsible for updating the contract details for a third party contracting manufacturer of my mic on sap a supply chain management software you need to liaise with different people in different departments to get the information volume for planning pricing for manufacturing and location from transportation there is one day left to complete the task and yet this file will be requested by email and form your contact in manufacturing has not responded to your requests so i would like to hear from you what steps would you take to gather information before the deadline if you could not obtain the information before the deadline what would you do and if you were successful in obtaining the information before the deadline how would you feel Okay, so for second challenge, you are responsible for working for updating this contract, for updating the contract details of a third-party contractor manufacturer of Mart Might on SAP or other supplier of the same management software. Now, we have the unit will be the unit will be the technology for them to get the information on volume. The information is volumes from volumes from planning, pricing from manufacturing, and location from transport. The period will one day left to complete the task, and here it is quite repeated to catch it by email and phone with your can. In manufacturing, has not responded to your request. So, I would, hmm, what steps will you take to gather the information for the deadline? Uh, okay, more people. If you go, if you cannot get the information for the deadline, what do you do? 
if it was run but it could not obtain the information before the deadline okay as far as the first question is concerned that uh, this is a scenario okay what step would you, you take to gather the information before deadline i think uh, gathering the information is important so first of all i'll try to communicate myself um, i will involve more people from uh, who are like my juniors or who are my subordinates and i will first i will also try myself and then i will also uh, you can see inter more people so that uh, their the chances of the connection increases so this is the first step and the second is if you if you couldn't obtain the information before the deadline what would you do uh, i think before the deadline uh, it is not uh, it's very difficult to, to act in such type of situation when uh, we need information but uh, information is missing so i think the first step is that uh, I will try to figure it out myself. I will definitely if my network is not working. So it, the problem is with this is my problem. This is my fault. So I will try to figure it out and uh, I will go to the city and I can also contact different manufacturers of the same industry so that the, why the problem is occurring and to get the feedback from them side and also I can uh, see the data from the previous uh, uh, from the previous meetings or from previous uh, you can say um, uh, pre previous information and try to figure out that what is the graph that either the or supplier or volume is planning increases like what is the probability that I mean how, what is the rate of um, what is the rate of data or what is the rate of increasing or decreasing the data so on that basis I think uh, if if at extreme case if uh, the deadline is upon us and uh, i am not able to communicate with the manufacturing team so i will use the previous figures but with some modification that what is the rate of according to the most prob uh, approximate, uh, approximated ex uh, expect approximated and the expected date so the third question is if you weren't successful in obtaining the information before the deadline how would you feel uh, definitely the feeling will be a little not good i will not feel definitely not good because it is my responsibility to communicate or to obtain the information but if due to any unfortunate reason definitely in the industries in the this type of sector sometimes we have to face such a difficult situation so i will feel a little bad but uh, definitely i will try to relax and calm myself and try to figure out the best solution in that type of situations In the third challenge, we are working in the quarantine for food factory in Malaysia producing lipton. Tomorrow is the deadline for shipping deliveries to giant supermarkets ready for the new lipton promotion. The promotion has featured an extensive social media campaign to drive sales. We have just been informed that the delivery of raw materials has broken down. There is a risk that the right manufacturing schedule will not be feasible in the time of the so in this case, what is the best impact on the retailer and consumer of failing to meet the delivery schedule? What steps could you take to solve this problem? What do you need to keep informed? And what method of communication would you choose for each? In this third one, you will know that you are working in the planning team of a foods factory in Malaysia, producing Lipton. Planning team of the food factory in Malaysia is producing Lipton. Tomorrow is the deadline for the first shipment delivery to giant supermarket ready for a new Lipton promotion. The promotion has featured an extensive social media campaign. Whatever you are just looking for, how the availability of the raw material has broken down. There is um, there is a data time inflation schedule. The market will not be feasible in the time of planning. Okay. So, what is the potential impact on the retailer and consumer? Or what is the potential impact on the retailer and consumer of, of, of failing to meet the delivery schedule? What steps could you take to solve the problem? Okay, who do you need to keep informed? 
or method of communication what would you choose for each what is the potential impact of the what is the potential impact on the retailer and consumer okay as far as the first question is concerned that what is the potential impact on the retailer and consumer of failing to meet the delivery delivery schedule so i think that uh, definitely the impact is immense impact because due to the heavy campaign on the social media so everything the uh, promotion is viral that they are um, the customers are going to wait that uh, the return is coming for the promotion but uh, definitely if due to some unexpected reason or unfortunate reason if the raw material is uh, not uh, available or is not is not in the proper line so it is difficult it is a bit difficult for to resolve the issue but the problem is that we are not going to leave it as it is but we have to solve it and so and that come to my second question that what steps could you take to solve the problem so i think the first step is that uh, in these type of situation when we are working for industries there is not only one potential supplier of the raw material we have definitely we have the backup plans uh, because in this type of situation often occur in the in the comment in this type of um, industry that in which uh, due to any unexpected reason one manufacturer is not able to supply your material or there is uh, any problem problem so there are different backup plans at that time that you know, we can uh, import the material from other supplier because definitely we have to give the right amount of um, quantity we have to produce so we need our uh, raw material so i will definitely try to uh, communicate with some other manufacturer or, or supplier and try to take the material from him or him so the step question is who do you need to keep informed so i think definitely uh, i will tell to my other retailer and retailers that uh, due to unexpected raw material malfunctioning this is the situation of the so that they are also aware i will also try to inform again my manager or the senior who is just above me so that he is he has the notice that this is a problem and i will also communicate with the or a country manager that this type of situation is occurring and the third one is what method of communication would you choose for it i think there are, there are basically three main methods of communication one is phone call other is email and the third is in person meeting so as this situation is critical and we don't have enough time so i will use all them in first i will write an email then i will follow up with a call and the third is i will go and meet in person with the um, potential come if they if or my manager if there is necessary but to, to the manufacturer i will just uh, i call him and make a meeting for him okay thank you Now let's move on to a slightly longer case study. You will now watch a video about supply chain approach. You will then have 10 minutes to review the business problems, come up with a solution, and prepare to present your recommendations. After the 10 minutes of preparation time, you will have up to 5 minutes of recording time to share your solution with us. As part of your response, please start up. How do you approach your analysis of the information? What in your opinion is the biggest benefit and why? What in your opinion is the most serious risk and why? What do you believe is the best way to overcome this risk? How does the red dispatch fit within the limit goals? And lastly, do you think in principle the red dispatch would work for every kind of product? Hello everyone, my name is Pierre Luigi Sigismondi. I've been in this company Unilever for uh, about 18 months. Uh, I'm an industrial engineer from uh, Georgia Tech and I've actually uh, been in the uh, supply chain operations sector for almost 20 years of my career. I started uh, in the consumer goods industry ever since uh, the late 90s, exploring all areas of the supply chain operation strategies and, and I, I can say that it's been a very exciting journey ever since then. Uh, Unilever is uh, it's a big company. I'm also proud to say that 
Unilever's uh, supply chain is very much focused on our customers and our consumers. We're passionate about quality. Uh, we want to work and improve the equity of our brands every day. And working with customers to improve our service levels is mandatory for us. Uh, we're actually looking for ways to increase uh, the perceived uh, service that we provide to many of our key accounts across the globe. Our mission is to really become the best supply chain in the industry. Uh, I've been working very hard ever since I joined this company to raise the ambition to become the best and we are perfectly on track to get there. We have been putting a lot of capabilities lately in this company to develop the depth but also the breadth from a strategic point of view to actually bring our performance to world-class standards. We're defining for each of our major categories global supply chain strategies which are basically looking for ways to deploy the best technologies across the globe. We're also looking for ways to deploy our assets and leverage our capacity globally by looking for ways to explore more between different continents. And to do that, we require a lot of strategic thinking and also an open-minded business approach. We believe that there is no supply chain that can be the best without full integration in the business, full understanding of how p &L, how it works, and in a way also about how we create value for the long term for this business. It all starts with the way in which we work with our suppliers and how we can leverage with open innovation new uh, ingredients, new materials that can lift the brand equity of our products, whilst at the same time having a, a more competitive cost of our own packaging materials and overall operations. Uh, on the other hand, we're also looking at manufacturing strategies that are fully embedded in the business strategies of each of the categories. And we have seen major opportunities to deploy uh, those uh, investments which are required to make our factories bigger and even more competitive over time. The challenge is, where do we go from here? What can we do to create additional value for our business? And this is precisely where the experience in supply chain, but also the business understanding is vital for us to keep lifting the bar and to get us to the place we want to be. So I'm very excited about uh, the journey where we are right now. This is a very energizing company. It's a company that is very open-minded, that is always looking for innovation, looking for uh, new ways of competing, we're benchmarking constantly any company that is competing with us, both on a global basis, but also very locally. And that's again uh, a capability that we have and that we need to reinforce by thinking more from the business end. It's very exciting. I, I mean, I'm not trying to uh, project uh, a picture which is far from reality. It's actually what I live day and night. So thank you very much and I wish you all the best. I'll let more start along with the shooting and that is patch and dispatch. Mm. We direct dispatch of the development of supply chain with the change of the library for the Niger and for the world of 75,000 supply and book. And then for the world of 10,000 people in 1990, we are the backbone of the business of the average young carrier and member of the world of the world. He is a new strategy planning manager of the Bible, so we will on this question from Mark to know that she has a very confident with this question. I don't know if you have a very good thing, but I don't know if you have a direct dispatch method. Direct dispatch method is a good idea to put what care of with some new direct dispatch. It's an average and it's a good thing. So that would be she is a very good way for the following products. The direct dispatch is an innovation which used in some of our market of their products are dispatched from producer to supplier direct. Goodies are supplied with the direct uh, dispatch to the from from goodies to the mass supplier direct to customers as in via distribution center where there are there are potential potential huge cost saving of land efficient so that we can there have been some successes and some failures where we are continuing learning and from how good it, how we do things but it may not be right away for every market of brand. I have sent some information from one of our teams who have updated and may not be for a good of incredible experience.
Okay, so the first question is how you approach your analysis of the information. So I think uh, direct dispatch is definitely I'm of the same view that in some markets, it's uh, uh, some markets as well as some of with some of the products, it is uh, good to have direct dispatch system. But uh, we cannot uh, at for example at this point we cannot do it for all the markets. And uh, what is the reason? I will definitely there are the different questions and I will cover them in the upcoming question so the next question is what is your opinion is the biggest benefit and why definitely the first the biggest benefit of direct dispatch system is the reduction in the cost definitely when we are going to give it the product from direct manufacturer to the consumer so definitely cost will be reduced and the other major important uh, importance is that sometimes in the market we have the different brands copies meaning in which they are going to be they, some little companies steal the copyrights and make the products by using the name of the company for example Unilever so if we have the uh, direct dispatch system so definitely the potential risk of the duplicate materials will be reduced and the customers will be satisfied from our products the next one the row is what is your opinion is the best is the most serious risk uh, the risk is that definitely when we are going to produce uh, some material some product and if we are going to then our main responsibility is to just deliver it to our uh, you can say distribution center but but in this case if we are going to implement the direct dispatch system we have to further branch out the system we have to further categorize the system and it's very difficult to manage the system but uh, it is also good that it will create more jobs for the generation because definitely we are high for example okay, for now we have one lakh can 
10,000 people so at that time we have more than 2 lakh people and being a Unilever company we will be able to give more job opportunities for the unemployed person so I think it is also a good thing but along with the risk that we have um, uh, extra burden on our uh, you can say manager we have to so we have to arrange more managers which is a bit difficult job so the next in the row is what do you believe is the best way to overcome the risk okay so the risk is that to, to communicate or to supply the product from consumer to for direct manufacturer to the consumer or direct manufacturer unit to the consumer unit so i think the the simplest solution is that first we are going to learn that we have to make a proper team a proper department which learn that how the product rotate from distribution center to the consumer and after a learning of one year six months whatever that's going to depending upon the market so we are going to start dispatching the system or dispatching the goods how do we direct this way the next is how does direct dispatch fit with Unilever goods I think the main main goal of the Unilever is to uh, increase the, increase the business and to increase the and also increase the product and with the uh, with the proper of the supplying of the quality for quality direct dispatch system is the best system because I, I have also mentioned that uh, because when we are going to directly dispatch and there is the, the risk of the potential copying or the stealing of the copyright is um, you can say m minimum or reduced because of the, when the customer know that uh, this is the center or the company is directly going to give it to us so definitely they are going to buy it from you rather than any other store which reduces the risk of any potential copy stealing of the copyrights and the last question is do you think in principle direct dispatch could work for every type of product uh, I think uh, it is not it cannot work for every type of product for example if you are going to if because it directly depends upon the uh, communication for example if you have a type of market like America or Europe where you have a good branding branding or you have good advertisement so there it can work best but for example in the country in the countries of Africa where there is uh, not much awareness about the laptops computers and in the, in the backward areas so they are not well aware that the company is directly dispatching things